Let's switch it on, let's see what it does. Through this coil of thick wire, we're about to pass a huge alternating electric current. On top is a one kilogram aluminium plate. So we hear this noise, what's that noise? It's the vibration of the plate, because it's vibrating at uh, two times the frequency of this, si of this, of this Wha one. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> How does it do that? To find out, I've come to the place where it all started, the Royal Institution in London. This is the key to Faraday's magnetic lab. It's amazing that a lock still works. From the 1870s on, this became a storeroom, which is why it survived, and it survived intact, all the joinery, drive electromagnet, uh, exactly the same as Faraday. Uh, so this is it. exactly as Faraday would have had. That's right, yep. In Faraday's time, it was known that electric current creates a magnetic field but it remained an open question whether the reverse is possible, if a magnetic field could generate electric current. Faraday answered this question with his most famous apparatus. Faraday's electromagnetic induction ring, which is this. In August 1831, Faraday wrapped two coils of insulated wire around this iron ring. But in 1831, you could not go down to your local electrical hardware shop and ask for 600 meters of insulated wire. You had to insulate the wire as you went, and so as you pushed and pulled the wire in out of the ring, you had to insulate it. It takes 10 working days, which is a huge investment of time. But the investment paid off. When Faraday connected a battery to one of the coils, he saw a brief pulse of current in the other coil. And when he disconnected the battery, he saw a pulse of current in the other direction. He realized that current was induced in the second coil only when the magnetic field through it was changing. And if they hadn't been wrapped on the same ring, Faraday may have noticed that the two coils repel each other, when the current is induced, and that's due to the interaction of their magnetic fields. Which brings us back to this. Through the bottom coil we are passing a huge electric current, 800 amps, which alternates in direction 900 times per second. This ensures there will always be a changing magnetic field above the coil. Instead of a second coil, we're using the aluminium plate, but the principle is the same. The changing magnetic field induces currents in the plate that create an opposing magnetic field, so it levitates. Oh. <laughs> How awesome is that? <laughs> this current is not only good for levitating the plate, it can also make light bulbs glow. A gift. Oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> that is cool. Not, not too close because it uh, will uh, burn the, the, the arms. Can I put it there? Yeah. And just as current in a toaster element heats it up, the induced current in the plate dissipates its energy as heat. Put some water too. Thank you. Yeah, to see the, the temperature. In. Check out how hot this plate is. Oh, that is nuts. <laughs> Is this your favorite demo? It's like a flying barbecue or something. Tell me this is not the best dinner table centerpiece. It levitates, it gives you light, and you can cook on it. And all the while, you're demonstrating Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. But where do they get that matter to grow? Yeah. It's nutrients out the ground. It's that soil, really, yeah. Goodness. Because the flame the soil, has those ions in it, it means that we soil. can break yeah. down a greater distance of air. Goodness. 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 Greater conductivity. Why isn't there a big hole around the tree where it's taken out all the soil? Because it doesn't say gradually that the soil has time to recover. <laughs> <laughs> you love 